One of the stranger parts of being a beauty blogger is the bit where you accumulate little piles of trash all around your home and then you collect all the trash together and you show the internet. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you the products that I've finished, my trash, and I'm going to let you know if I thought they were good enough to repurchase. So we're going to start with skincare first. So I have the Bioderma Micellar Water, the Sensor Bio H2O. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why do I feel embarrassed? Are you judging me? Seven and a little one. So seven and a half perhaps. We can deduce that I like the, the Bioderma Sensor Bio. Uh, it's really great on sensitive skin types. My skin is getting increasingly sensitive as I get older and this has never irritated. Uh, and it's great for pretty much removing all kinds of makeup except perhaps the most indelible of like waterproof mascaras. You'll probably need an oil for that. But for everything else, I love me my Bioderma. That's not to say that I don't enjoy other micellar waters. I like the, the Garnier in the pink bottle. Also the Simple Skincare micellar water, that stuff's great, been using it for years. And also more recently I tried the Biore uh, Charcoal Cleansing micellar water and that worked well as well. I have two biphase uh, makeup removers. So these are for your more uh, waterproof mascaras and things that require a bit more of an oily texture to remove. I have the Garnier Twin One Express Eye Makeup Remover. I really enjoyed that. Um, probably my favorite was the Clinique Take the Day Off Makeup Remover makeup remover for lids, lashes, and lips. This stuff is great for removing really long wearing mascara. You don't have to tug at all. So this cleanser I've been using for, I wanna say since I was 14 years old, so a damn long time. And they've since reformulated it, um, which made me pretty upset. I had a rant online, but you know, I've since built a bridge and got over it. This is the La Roche-Posay Lipica Cindet, which was actually a body wash. Yes, they, they have this on the market. It's the same product, it's called the same thing, but it's a different ingredient list. So what do you do? The QV Gentle Foaming Cleanser. This is a good alternative to the Lipica Sindet. Um, it comes out in a big, foamy, satisfying lather, um, but the foam is actually created by the pump. It doesn't have a whole ton of uh, really aggressive surfactants. Another one that's good for sensitive skin types, the Evian Facial Spray. This is essentially water in a can. Um, so as long as you know that, as long as you're not under any like guise of it being some sort of miracle fluid, it's nice. I use it sometimes to set my makeup. Another mist, um, this one I really do enjoy, is the Dermalogica Ultra Calming Mist. And this isn't just water, it's got um, some soothing extracts and things like glycerin um, to hydrate the skin. So love using that pretty much whenever, whenever my skin is feeling a little bit irritated. Uh, let's talk about, oh man, the Dr. Spiller Fresh and Fruit Moisturizing Mask. One, two, three, four, five, woohoo. To me, this is like a good skin day in a tub. Uh, it's hydrating, it plumps dehydration, it smooths any of my skin texture with those really gentle enzymes, it helps with congestion, it's just, it's the best. And I've um, had a few of you guys reach out to me and say that you're finding it hard to find, um, and that's because I'm buying them all. <laughs> Thanks, bye! Um, but yeah, I get a lot of uh, like DMs like, hey, I live in Canada or Malaysia, where can I find the Dr. Spiller? fresh and fruit moisturizing mask. And the short answer is I'm not Canadian or Malaysian, so I have no idea. <laughs> I think if I were you, I would just email the Dr. Spiller, the Dr. Spiller email that they have on their site and I'm sure that they can give you a stockist better than I can. The Pericone Face Finishing Moisturizer. So this is actually a fabulous moisturizer for dehydration. It feels like a drink of water to the skin. And the only reason that I wouldn't repurchase this product uh, is because it peels. It has the tendency to kind of ball up if you apply makeup over it. But if you are looking for something for serious dehydration, this stuff was bomb. Also the Dr. Barbara Sturm face cream. I raved about this on YouTube. I loved it. I used it right to the last drop. Um, but to be honest, it hasn't been in my life for a few months and I haven't really missed it. Um, so I would consider repurchasing that one at some stage in the future, but perhaps not right now. Let us move on to some face masks, uh, shall we? This is the Borges, I've never known how to pronounce that, and it's the first time that I've tried to say it out aloud. The Borges Fango, active mud for face and body. I love this stuff. This is like one of my all-time favorite masks for when, I'm, when my, my skin just feels a bit shit. 
this is the stuff that I use and it's really great for congestion and pimples and oh, I love it. And I'm finding it really hard to repurchase online. So what do you want me to do? The Dermalogica Skin Hydrating Mask, another one that I always have in my collection. This is like a drink of water to the skin. It's great for plumping fine lines. If you've overindulged in any way, shape or form, if you're off a flight, I wear that overnight and oh, can't say enough good things. And then the final mask that I have here, you might remember if you're an OG of this channel, the Sicily Black Rose Cream Mask. Uh, and this stuff is so decadent and so lovely. And I mean, if someone bought it for me as a gift, I would be thrilled and I would love it and use it. I'm not sure I would repurchase. Dermalogica takes a cake for me and it's also much, much less money. Two miscellaneous skincare items. I have the Hourglass um, Lip Oil. Oh, this stuff is, is just delightful. Every time you use it, it feels like a treat. It's an unusual texture for a lip balm, but super hydrating and smoothing, and it looks lovely and glossy on the lips. And the Skin Iceland Blemish Dots with Salicylic Acid. I love these. I've already repurchased them. Um, they're like little stickers that you put on your pimples overnight. Or I mean, I guess you could wear them during the day as well. A, it stops you from picking at them, which is half the battle. And B, the salicylic acid actually does treat the blemish. And I feel like they, the pimples go down much quicker than they would otherwise. So yeah, love those. Oh, another thing. So last time I did an empties video, I got a, um, like a bunch of comments that I found really perplexing. People who were reminding me to recycle. <laughs> you guys, of course I recycle. I, like, I'm a functioning member of society or, or, you know, I try to be. Yes, I definitely recycle, just, just to clarify. All right, let's move on to a little bit of makeup. Um, mostly mascara. That's my mom, hang on. Ma, can I call you back? I'm filming. All right, love you. All right, look, there's a lot of mascara. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I should, um, uh, I should separate the mascara into would repurchase and wouldn't repurchase. Ah, that's smart. All right, let's talk about uh, mascaras that I definitely will repurchase. The Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir. Uh, when I think volumizing mascara, this is the one that comes to mind, been using it for years, definitely would repurchase. The MAC Houghton Naughty Lash is like two mascaras in one. If you open it up in the purple side, you get more of a loaded lash effect um, because the brush picks up more product. However, if you open it up on the pink side, you get a little bit more of a delicate, fluffy lash. Man, this is like up there with one of my top five mascaras of all time. Would 100% um, repurchase that. Oh, I adore this one. This is the Sisley So Intense. Um, and it has uh, one of a really interesting almost comb applicator and the minute I opened this I was like I'm not gonna like that and I love it this is like pitch black super dramatic lash um, and even though it's really pricey I would I would definitely repurchase that one I absolutely adore the Clinique high impact mascara this is great if you you want a little bit of everything. You want a bit of volume, you want that separation, um, but you don't want it to be clumpy. This is a great mascara that I feel like kind of everyone will like. Um, also, this is one that I was, um, that I mentioned in one of my yearly favorites, the Estee Lauder Envy Lash Multi Effects. I opened up this mascara thinking, oh great, another mascara. And then I was like, wow, this is the best mascara ever. So it has two sides to it and one side is like a plastic wand and the other side is a natural fiber wand and you just get the best of both worlds. Super fanned and black and dense. Oh, love that. Um, also the CoverGirl Peacock Flare, a really great drugstore mas mascara. This would be one of my favorites. Um, it's really great for getting the corner lashes, I find. Two mascaras that I love, um, would repurchase, but they come with caveats. The NARS Climax, very volumizing, super dramatic mascara, smudges on me. So I don't wear it on the lower lashes, I only wear it on the top lashes. And essentially the same story with the Hourglass Caution Mascara. Great, inky, loved it on my upper lashes. Couldn't wear it on my lower lashes because I would get a little bit of a panda eye effect. All right, let's move on to the mascaras that I would not repurchase. Are you getting bored of this? I, can't, I feel like I'm kind of getting bored of my own voice here. Tarte Lifted Mascara. I love Tarte, but I'm so confused by this product. It was marketed as a waterproof mascara and legitimately I've never had a mascara smudge on me like this. It was, it was very strange. Um, the Benefit 
bad gal bang just don't really remember this didn't make much of an um of a, a impression on me so I, I guess i wouldn't be repurchasing that the estee lauder sumptuous extreme again another one that i liked but didn't blow me away charlotte tilbury legendary lashes this is volume two all of charlotte's uh, mascaras though i love them and i love the effect they all smudge on me equally <laughs> I purchased the Kevin Aquan Volume Mascara because I remembered that years ago I used to love this Kevin Aquan Mascara and they have the Curling Mascara and the Volume Mascara. I bought the Volume, turns out that the one that I remember, the one that I loved, was actually the Curling Mascara. Yeah, great story bro, <laughs> tell it again sometime. The Clarins Supra Volume. Um, again, nothing wrong with this mascara. I enjoyed it. It just didn't leave um, a huge impression on me, so I probably wouldn't repurchase. The Shiseido Full Lash Volume Mascara. Um, I believe this one had fibers in it that irritated my eyes. Oh, this was an interesting one. The Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. Um, I liked this, and then out of nowhere, it started flaking like crazy. All right, lucky last. The CoverGirl Total Tease. Um, unusual ball end. I never understand what 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 are you thinking when you put an unusual ball on the end of mascara because that to me is a poking hazard but what do i know all right let's talk brows i've got the suku brow pen this was in the shade moss green they've since redesigned their colors this is still the best brow pen on the market and there are others there are other brow pens and i do enjoy them i'll uh, i'll give you that um, but this is i think the original and the best don't at me also i have the benefit 24-hour brow setter which is my favorite convenient brow gel i'll say um, it's a it's a clear brow gel i keep it in my handbag give my brows a little bit of a fluff fluff and they stay that way all day and what more could you ask um, from from a brow gel i also have the surat um, brow pomade this stuff is it operates a little bit more like soap for the brows so it is uh, quite a dense pomade texture and it gives you that great fluffy vogue brow if, if that's what you're into also some of you guys were telling me that you were having trouble finding it and so i emailed mecca and they told me that this is not being discontinued so we can all just oh, engage in a big sigh of relief it's still on the market also the anastasia uh, clear brow gel yeah man i heard a lot of good things about this and I just thought it was meh. meh, meh. I go through many, many a lash glue, but here are two noteworthy ones. I have the House of Lashes Eyelash Adhesive and the Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive. I'm convinced that these are essentially the same formula. They even have uh, the same strange sort of blue iridescence to them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would, I like to, I mean, I'd repurchase the cheaper one, wouldn't I? <laughs> I have two makeup sprays. The Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray, this is geared towards longevity and it works. This stuff makes your makeup last longer. Um, I will always have a, a bottle or five <laughs> in my collection. And the Too Cool For School Coconut Milky Mist. I've been raving about this for Yonks. I purchased it in South Korea and it is just the most incredible mist. It's so fine, you can barely feel it touching your face and it hydrates the skin. It's not really so much for longevity as it is for just breathing new life into your makeup and settling any powders. And duh, I went ahead and bought a, a second bottle on Cult Beauty. <laughs> it was kind of a little bit more, more money than I, than I remember paying for it, but totes worth it. I have a foundation here. This is the Armani, my Armani to go, Essence in Foundation Cushion SPF 23. Uh, shade four is the best foundation match, color match that I've ever encountered in all of my life. Um, the formula is also beautiful, medium coverage, satin, nice middle of the road. I've got one here to show you, but really I think I went through about three. The Too Faced Perfect Lips Lip Liner in Nude, uh, which they discontinued. I'm very unhappy about it, considering writing an email to Too Faced. Dear Too Faced, how dare you? because this was one of my favorite lip liners for when I wanted a, like a proper nude lip. Um, you know, not a rosy nude, not a brownie nude, like a nude nude. This was my jam, but I guess no longer. Um, so let me know, what's your favorite lip liner for a nude nude? I wanna know. All right, let's get onto the hair portion of this video. Okay, so this next product, uh, let me tell you the story. So I had an Aveda paddle hairbrush for 10 years maybe. 
Um, and I love that thing, love of my life. And it was looking a little bit worse for wear. So when Aveda sent me a new paddle brush, I was super, super stoked. And I raved about it on Instagram stories. And then the first time that I used it to blow dry my hair, the bristles melted into my hair and took out a chunk of my hair. You know, I, I mentioned on Instagram stories and I felt responsible, like I had to tell you that maybe this isn't meant to be used with heat or something. Onto some shampoo, the Davines Volume Shampoo, loved this, definitely did inject a little bit of volume into this lifeless hair. I've got the Aveda Dry Remedy Moisturizing Shampoo, made my hair so soft and it felt so healthy. Um, but it's definitely hydrating in a way that I felt like I had to wash my hair more often. I have the Acqui Rebalancing Hair Wash. This one didn't lather, which might be totally okay for some of you, but I need a hair lather in my shampoo. Otherwise, I just, I don't get that satisfying, clean feeling. I know it's all in my head. I know it is, but I like lather. Also, I have the Shoot and Mirror Cleansing Oil Shampoo. Again, this one was gentle and lovely, but I, I felt like I had to kind of wash my hair a little bit more frequently. Christopher Robin Cleansing Volumizing Paste. So this has quite a cult following. Firstly, it smells delightful, like roses. And it's a dense hair paste that you emulsify in water. It gets very big and lathery and you massage it into the scalp. And it's meant to have clays that uh, kind of detoxify and, and cleanse the scalp. And I really like it. It is a little bit fiddly, FYI. Yeah, it, it's, it's a nice pamper hair pamper sesh. And then this duo, oh, I absolutely adored this. The Kevin Murphy Blonde Angel Wash and the Christopher Robin Baby Blonde Hair Mask. So I use these in conjunction with each other and it keeps um, any of my ends from going brassy because it has that blue purple tinge. And my hair just felt salon worthy for the entire six weeks or so that I was using this combo. And I've got to get back on that train again. I keep saying that hairspray is not a splurge worthy item, but every time I finish a hairspray, it's the damn Orbe super fine hairspray and I keep repurchasing it and keep using it up. So, so clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I would repurchase it, it's great hairspray. Let's talk about dry shampoo. My life, I mean, it could be described as a dry shampoo journey, just from one dry shampoo to the next, you know, I've got to catch more. So a dry shampoo that I'm always repurchasing all the time is the Batiste dry shampoo in whatever flavor, <laughs> I like all the flavors. And I enjoy that this one feels very light and airy in the hair. So you don't get that kind of intense grittiness. I also enjoy the Chlorine Dry Shampoo with oat milk. Uh, this one is a little grittier than the Batiste, in my opinion, although I've had this debate with, <laughs> with quite a few of my friends, which of the dry shampoos is grittier. So it's a very millennial discussion. Anyway, uh, yeah, I do enjoy this one, it helps with volume, I would say. Three high-end uh, dry shampoos that really stood out and I would repurchase. Um, the Kevin Murphy Dry Shampoo Spray, you wouldn't know that you had dry shampoo in your hair. No grittiness, no inability to brush your hair, just very light and airy. Uh, similar story with the Davines uh, Dry Cleansing Mist. Not at all offensive to my, to my sensibilities and my dry shampoo quirks and also the player pure dry shampoo. This one is doubles as a hair fragrance. It's delightful. Three dry shampoos that I thought were a bit overrated, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, the um, Bumble and Bumble dry shampoo, Preda Powder. Uh, first of all, I went through this in like two days and I was really perplexed, but again, didn't notice anything special about it. The Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo. I heard everybody rave about this online, so I purchased it and I just thought it was okay. Just okay. And also the IGK Jet Lag Invisible Dry Shampoo. Another one that uh, lasted me one and a half days. I mean, I have long hair, but come on. Okay, I promise we are almost finished. Almost finished. Let's talk a little bit about body products. So I have here the Grown Alchemist uh, Body Treatment Oil, and I really enjoyed this. I used it both neat on my body as a moisturizer or I would add a few dashes to my bath for a little bit of a, an oil treatment. Um, it smells quite strongly of Lang Lang. You know, you gotta like your Lang Lang for this one, but I really enjoyed it. Something you might not know about me is that I'm a bath fanatic. 
I will have a bath most nights unless I have to wash my hair, in which case I have a shower. But really, I'd, ideally, I'd rather be having a bath. And I absolutely love everything by this brand. It's Salt by Hendrix, and they do uh, something called a coconut milk infusion. So you add a little bit of powder, this powder to your bath, and it becomes this big milky oasis. It's Oh, it's an experience. So I've got the Cocoa Soak in Rose, uh, also the Pomegranate Coconut Milk Infusion. Love that. And perhaps my favorite, the Matcha. Because it's Matcha. Who doesn't love Matcha? Uh, salt by Hendrix also does uh, your bath salts. Bergamot Vanilla French Clay, Lang Lang French Clay. You got that detoxifying clay in there. Oh, yeah, mate. Would, would repurchase all of them again in a heartbeat. Lucky last category. And I'm going to call this my miscellaneous category because it's just miscellaneous stuff that apparently I kept because I wanted to show you. Uh, so I've gone through a whole bunch of Kiss trios. Kiss trios um, changed my life. I think they're a wonderful, wonderful lash invention. They're three individuals that have been set side by side and it gives you that individual lash look, but it's much, much quicker because individual lashes can take forever, right? I'm actually wearing a few on the outer corner of my eye today. I also went through a whole ton of uh, individual lashes. So I purchase not free individuals in short and medium, and I'll purchase them from any brand. Here are a few, ex a few examples. I've got Andrea, a brand called Andrea. I've got Ardell, honestly, whatever. Use them all. The Lilash Eyelash Serum. So this is a growth serum for your eyelashes. And um, I tend to use this after I've had lash extensions just to help my natural lashes recuperate. And it works, uh, no doubt about it. This is not a scam, it works. After six or so weeks, I notice my lashes are longer, denser, fuller. The only thing that I would say is I notice almost like a little discoloration at my lash line when I use this. It's almost like a dark circle that you would have under your eye, like a purplish kind of circle, but it's across my lash line. Just make sure you do your research, okay? Research any product that you're putting near your eye. But yes, I, d I definitely found that, that the lilac lash worked. I have two brushes here, <laughs> um, which they're not exactly empty, so to speak, but they might as well be because these two... Brushes shed like a joke. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Powder and Sculpt. This thing sheds like a mofo. I took it um, on a shoot recently and halfway through the shoot, I just discarded it because it was putting fibers everywhere. And essentially the same can be said for the MAC 224. I mean, this brush is really old. Damn, this brush could be like 10 years old now. I have the Orly Won't Chip Chip Resistant Top Coat. I enjoyed this, but I'm a Sesh Vite kind of girl. I don't know, I'm always coming back to Seshvit. And then in terms of like a brush cleanser and sanitizer, I use the Scotty's uh, Studio Brush Sterilizer. It's 70% alcohol. You can use it for spot cleaning or sterilizing your brushes. I go through this stuff in bulk. I buy it in bulk. Obvs will repurchase. And then my very, very final little category is fragrance. Oh, I love talking about fragrance. So this is uh, something called Raindrops. And I actually formulated this fragrance. So the last time I was in New York, I came across this cool little shop that blends fragrances on the spot so you can choose all your different notes. But mine was called Raindrops. I mean, it was kind of, you know, inspired by rain and really fresh notes and really clean notes. Mm, I absolutely adore that. And they, they actually keep your formula in store. So if you wish to repurchase Raindrops, I mean, you can do that. How cool is that? I also have the Rouge Bunny Rouge Vespers, which is another very fresh fragrance, very fresh and clean. You've got a lot of green notes, uh, but it's still a little bit sweet and, and very wearable. I have the Jo Malone Mimosa and Cardamom Cologne. It's gourmand with that cardamom foodie note, but then it's also very chic. It's kind of like a grown-up tea party and I would 100% um, repurchase that one. And then my final fragrance is so Nude by Costume National. This one to me is like a sophisticated gummy bear. <laughs> That's how I, honestly how I would describe it. It kind of smells a little bit like gummy bears, but with a sophisticated edge, like fashion, fashion gummy bears. Oh my God, <laughs> what a mission. Thank God I can finally throw out my trash. I'm so happy. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope that like you had me in the background while you were doing like the laundry or something because that was 
I, I'm bored of my own voice <laughs> at this stage. Um, but if you would like to see more of me after all of that, then come say hello to me on Instagram at Karima McKimmy. I would love to chat to you there. I do little mini Insta tutorials and giveaways and we're having, we're having a good time. Uh, so yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever it is you're up to, and I shall speak to you all very soon.